the Commissioner of Police, Ondo State Command, Undi Adi, has denied the report that, the, that 10 passengers were kidnapped along Akure Ikere Road. In his reaction to the incident, he said only a driver was inside the vehicle when the abductor struck and the commander is working to secure his release. It was only the driver that was in a previous space bus, not an 18-seater bus, a previous space bus that he was driving and he was intercepted it, and it is only that driver that uh, was kidnapped and taken into the bush. Immediately, our anti-kidnapping unit and uh, patrol teams from the division uh, moved into the bush. As at this moment, we have met, uh, related with um, our technical unit and uh, coordinates have been obtained. Our men are back in the bush. The National Union of Road Transport Workers are insisting more than one person was kidnapped. Our TVC News cannot independently verify this claim, but members of the community where the abduction took place blame the incident on the state of the road. All right, joining me now via Skype to share his thoughts on Nigeria's security situation is security analyst Sheyi Adetayo. Thank you for joining us on TBC Breakfast. Now, Nigeria, some of the state governors in the southwest have well met before this incident of the kidnap. And before now, the governors of the north, the northeast and the northwest also met the question is, how much impact is this going to have on uh, the security situation, seeing that uh, constitutionally they do not have uh, as much powers uh, when it comes to the security apparatus? Okay, um, thank you very much. So me, uh, even acting in the first instance, coming together uh, shows that um, they are actually seeing this as a major situation, which definitely will bring all um, security agencies uh, to their, uh, put them on their toes. Uh, because one thing is for us to continue to deny, another thing is for us to uh, accept the fact that, yes, we have an issue at hand. And uh, yes, I quite agree with you that there's limits to how much control they have over the security agencies. But we need to also understand that um, intelligence is critical to security operations and planning and um, your effective security uh, operations. Because without intelligence, you will not be able to do much. And that's one of the reasons why our police uh, is, uh, force, uh, have, they have not been able to, to achieve much in, in this regard. So now the intelligence component is actually within the control of the state government. The traditional institutions, the community, is slightly under the local government. And local government is some one way or the other subsumed under the state. Uh, leadership. So the the people in question, whether they are foreign uh, uh, foreign headsmen or they are local people, uh, the fact remains that it is not just only one group that is involved with this. Yes, most of the cases we are having recently uh, are being perpetrated by the other side, but we still have locals, people from the same region that are actually still involved, especially also ritual killings. So, so now, if I may cut in now, what framework would you want to be put in place by the state governors to ensure that all of the, the intelligence that you have mentioned uh, becomes effective? Yes, um, the, like I said earlier, the local government structures is subsumed under the state. And the local government are the one uh, responsible for the traditional institutions. Bandits, when they kidnap, they still keep them within the community. It might be maybe 30, 40 kilometers away, but in the community within the same southwest. And this community has a ruler. There are people, there are farmers farming along that road. They see them. You see, the, one of the reasons why we're not getting intelligence is because when these people are not, they don't have the confidence, the assurance that when they give this intelligence, that um, they, are, they, they will be protected. But if the state can put up a, a framework where intelligence can freely flow and there'll be source protection, there's a channel within which if a farmer should see something, he knows where to go, who to call, and it's just going to be under uh, a framework that the state government has been able to put together and the information will flow straight 
state to the security agencies. I think the state government can put this in place because the reason is that the moment they are betrayed, they are aware that these people will come to the village and sack the whole village. And that's the reason why everybody, all these farmers are keeping quiet. But if there is an assurance, they can guarantee them that right. when you see these people on the move, give us this information. This is where you should come. And your 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 uh, identity will be protected. You all start right. beginning to see free flow of information. Um, the, the, the major sources of intelligence is the people. You need to reach out to the people, to the communities, for you to get the real information. And these are the real people. And see, uh, it's in the news that uh, the vigilante in a particular community in Ikiri arrested about 10 gangs of armed robbers. This just happened yesterday or so, and it's in the news today. You see, every community, Yoruba, the southwest, is structured. It's not only South Korea, I said the same thing in Belgium and some other northern states. They have their local vigilantes arrangement that they use in protecting the community. Over time, some of these, they have, they have lost steam, but these are the things that can be reinvigorated. I remember when Ijebodi and Shagamu was a hotbed uh, for, for crimes and criminality. The people came together and said enough is enough, and they had the support of the government. What I'm saying is this, that we need the government need to reach out to all these communities, let them resuscitate the, tra the, the local security apparatus in each community, as big as the farmlands and forests in my own town is, it is properly policed. There is no how you can enter anybody's farm as big as it is in the Jebu that the community, the, the people in the community will not say somebody has gone to somebody's farm. We have the way traditionally in which we cover the whole place. The most important thing here is that it's a trust. People must be able to trust government that government means so well, and they're going to protect them when they give out this information. And that's the reason why government really needs to now, you know, develop yeah, a working uh, security framework. You see, something is happening in Maduguri, and it's, it's a template uh, that the, CG, uh, the civilian JTF. It's a template that cannot be adopted. These guys are giving their whole in all, and they are being sponsored, you know, being financed by the state government. If we have found ourselves in a situation whereby some bandits are terrorizing them, and say their numbers are increasing every day. I said something before. The words on the street in Mali, in Burkina Faso, in Chad, in Niger, is that there is a big business in Nigeria, and it is called kidnapping. So instead of them to, the agent to uh, bring, help people to come to Nigeria for gateman work, what they are now hunting, uh, I mean head hunting, they are head hunting uh, people that can carry gun and come and, you know, uh, do kidnappings in Nigeria. So there are agents in all those countries that is helping these kidnapping warlords to recruit more members from all these countries. And that's what I'm giving you. This is the true nature of, of the situation right now. And they are developing more camps, more cells in different parts of the country. They are coming in every day. And that's why they are increasing. And if you cannot put up structures in place that will match up with this increasing you know, trend, then we're going to have a problem in the next two or three years where people will not even be able to go from Lagos uh, to Lagos by the first way to a battle. We need to do something right now. And the best because they are hibernating in the forest. The forests are farmlands. So this forest belongs to some communities. All right. These communities know when these people are moving, but okay. they are afraid to speak out because these people can come back and sack their community. All right. The government can give them the assurance that we will protect you and they will provide your necessary resources. You'll be surprised with the amount of information, intelligence they can get. Coming out. Thank you so much, uh, Shay Adetayo, for all of that, uh, talking to us about the collaboration from communities. Thank you.